Welcome to a session of science period for grade 7. We are dealing with chapter 1, nutrition in plants. Now what does this nutrition mean? It means that every organism needs food for its energy, for its daily activities, for its growth, for reproduction. So they need this thing and how do they get it? They basically get it from plants. Plants synthesize food. They make their own food. When they make their food, say it's basically carbohydrates. The carbohydrates and fats are energy giving food. Proteins are bodybuilding food. Vitamins and minerals are for the nutrition. Now how do these plants synthesize food? It's the, basically there are two ways this nutrition occurs in plants. It is by autotrophic and heterotrophic. Autotrophic mode of nutrition is the mode of nutrition in which an organism makes its own food from the simple substances like carbon dioxide, water and minerals present in the surroundings. Which is, this is called autotrophic mode of nutrition. Organisms which having this autotrophic mode of nutrition are called autotrophs. Ah, was it too hard? These are some of the definitions that do come in the examination. So you got to memorize them. So autotrophic mode of nutrition, auto means self. So autotrophic plants are, they can synthesize their own food. Green plants are autotrophic. Now heterotrophic is the second mode of nutrition. And these plants cannot prepare their own food. It is the mode of nutrition in which an organism cannot make its own food from simple substances but obtain ready-made food made by green plants directly or indirectly. This type of nutrition is called heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Now this heterotrophic mode of nutrition can be again of three types which we will see later. Now in autotrophic mode of nutrition, when we turn to a textbook when we move on to page 8, we come to the term photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process by which green plants make their own food, that is glucose, from carbon dioxide and water using solar energy in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight. That is, plants make their own food. Now, for this, let's, let's take it in equation form. Carbon dioxide is CO2, water is H2O and the product in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, what do we get? What do they make? They make glucose that is C6H12O6. If I put it in an equation form, this way it would be. So we find that six molecules of carbon dioxide combines with six molecules of water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, they give one molecule of glucose. Now the molecule of glucose is C6H12O6. That's the simplest glucose with the liberation of oxygen. Now we find that the food prepared by the green leaves is in the form of the most simple substance called glucose. Now the plant prepares it as a form of glucose. It is carried to a certain part where it is needed for the growth or for storage, it is carried in the form of sucrose. That is the sugar which we eat, the cane sugar. And then when it needs to be stored, it is stored in the form of starch. That's how it's done. What are the requirements for photosynthesis? Basically, there are three things that we have seen. Water and carbon dioxide. Sunlight, we get it from the sun. So here I have a plant with me. I just, it is a weed that was growing in my garden, I had to uproot it. So I pulled it out. Now you find this is the root part and this is the shoot part. Now this fine hair that is there, it absorbs the water by a process called osmosis. Now the question comes, what's osmosis? It is in a process by which the water molecules move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. I brought this with me. Now they, they, there are three potatoes here. Now these three potatoes, I have kept it in a tray of water. Can you see the water here? Uh, let's see. Yes. This water I have poured it 
into this. So you have the water. I kept this. Three. One is a boiled potato. The second is a potato which is not boiled. And the third is again a plain potato. I have dug into it. Now what I did is I put salt in this boiled potato and this potato which is which has just been peeled, it's not boiled at all. Now I put them into water, I keep them in a tray of water. Now slowly water is absorbed from here and moves on that side towards the salt. We'll see what happens after a few minutes, after about some time, the water moves from the tray into the potato and the salt I have put there gets dissolved. The membranes which allow water molecules to pass from a higher concentration to a lower concentration that's called a semi permeable membrane and this is done through osmosis and that's what happens in the roots the water that is there the water molecules move into the plant by the process of osmosis now in the plant we have two types of vessels which conduct water and food the vessels which conduct water are called xylem and those vessels which conduct food are called phloem. The water is absorbed by the process of osmosis and is taken up to the leaves where the leaves in the presence of sunlight and carbon dioxide make food. The food that is prepared can be stored in the leaves, in the stem and if it is one of those like potato, they, they store it in the in the rhizobium part in the in the stem part which is under the ground now we come to the part where this potato which was in water has absorbed the water and the salt that is there is dissolving or there is water here this water came into the potato by the process of osmosis by the process of osmosis here the potato cells act as a semi permeable membrane. Then why did I take this potato, the boiled potato? The boiled potatoes, all the cells have died and therefore there is no osmosis. The salt is dry in it, is just as dry as a bone. And this potato, because there is no salt, there is no water in it. So that also shows a part of osmosis where osmosis, the molecules have to flow from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Now we look at the carbon dioxide part. Now how is this carbon dioxide absorbed into the plant? It is absorbed through the stomata. These stomatas are small openings in the leaves. We cannot see it naturally. They are mostly on the underside of the leaf. And it's from there the oxygen is absorbed through the stomata. Again I repeat, these openings are not seen. You'll have to see it under a microscope. And this is how it is. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a very essential part which is seen in green leaves. Now this chlorophyll, it's found in the green leaves in the chloroplast. And there, you know, they're stacked like coins that are there. You know, one above the other when you keep it. They are called granules and they are stocked one above the other. So when you look in the microscope, that's how it appears to be. This green pigment that is there, it converts the solar energy into chemical energy that is glucose it converts the solar energy into the chemical energy it's done by the chlorophyll that's present in the chloroplast of green plants now not all plants are able to do this there are some plants which may not be green i have a sample of them now this plant is not at all green it looks, you know, it's got the violet color in it. Now you may ask me, does it perform photosynthesis? Yes, it does perform photosynthesis. That's because the green color is hidden behind this color of it, the violet color that is there. These plants are basically, a, we call them uh, carotenoids that are present in the thing. They are basically yellow in color or orange in color. Now that's what gives the color to the leaf. And I have another one, I don't know if I brought it or not. Yes, I have another one which is yellowish in color. So all this is because of the keratinides that are present. They, they beautify the leaf, or they beautify the plant, and that's how it's stored. The next aspect in photosynthesis is sunlight. Without sunlight, a plant 
cannot perform photosynthesis. Sunlight is a very essential part because that's what converts the solar energy into chemical energy that's glucose. Importance of photosynthesis. Can you imagine our earth without plants? Now, photosynthesis enables green plant to make their own food. In the absence of photosynthesis, there's no life. Aquatic plants like hydrilla and velocinaria take carbon dioxide dissolved in the water. And they are, you know, they have strips like leaves or they may be floating leaves. Now these leaves take in carbon dioxide which is dissolved in the water. Then we come to the aspect of why photosynthesis is necessary. Why is photosynthesis important? Photosynthesis enables green plants to prepare their own food. The second is that the survival of all animals for food depends upon plants because plants can prepare their own food, animals cannot prepare, so they are dependent on plants. The third is that the plants give out oxygen, which is very essential for the survival of all living organisms. So that's being three important aspects of photosynthesis. Plants also synthesize proteins and fats. Proteins are synthesized basically by plants like uh, pea, those leguminous plants. They have root nodules in those plants. Uh, I, I do not have them, but here when you look, they have nodules at their ends. Now what happens is, in those nodules, we have a bacteria called rhizobium. These bacteria enables the plant to take nitrogen in the soluble form. This plant cannot take nitrogen from the air, even though there is 78% of nitrogen in the air. So it does not suffice for it. The plant needs it in liquid form. So this rhizobium bacteria that is there, it's symbiosis. The bacteria takes food from the plant and then it provides nitrogen in liquid form to the plant. And the plant is able to synthesize protein. There are some plants like mustard, and sunflower which converts the carbohydrate into oil and we get extract oil from that. Heterotrophic mode of nutrition. It is a mode of nutrition in which an organism cannot make its own food from simple substances but obtain ready-made food made by the green plants directly or indirectly. This mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic mode of nutrition and organisms that having such a heterotrophic mode of nutrition are called heterotrophs. Now there are basically three types. One is the saprotrophic nutrition. Now saprotrophic nutrition are those plants which dwell upon or take nutrition from dead or organic matters. They cannot synthesize their own food. They're basically whitish in color or they do not have leaves because they, they are not able to prepare their own food. Just a stem and a flower may come out as in the case of Indian pipe or the coral roots. These are basically types of saprophytic mode of nutrition. They dwell upon dead and decaying matter and that's how they take the nutrition. Then the parasitic mode of nutrition. In parasitic mode of nutrition, cascuta is the best example. That's a yellow wine-like, you know, yellow wire-like structure. It winds around the plant. It winds around the plant and then it literally sucks out the nutrition from it. They have, you know, like hook-like structures which penetrate deep into the stem and then take out the nutrition. They are total parasites. Cascuta is the example as I said. So they are parasitic plants. There are semi-parasitic plants like mistletoe. They can prepare their own food, but for nutrition like water and minerals, they depend upon the plant on which it is dwelling upon, on the branches they dwell upon. We have a few examples like mistletoe and it has got a very sticky fruits for the disposal of seed. And when the birds come and eat the seeds, the seeds stick to the beak of the bird. And then when it rubs its beak on the branch, the seeds stick to the branch and there it sprouts into a new plant. That's how the, those semi-parasitic uh, mistletoe is able to grow. Then we have symbiosis. Now lichens are the most amazing form of life. A lichen is actually composed of two distinct organisms, the algae and the fungi. They live together. 
they enable each other the algae provides food the the it has chlorophyll so it provides food to the fungi and they the fungi is able to attach itself to some rock and thus they provide protection to this algae and thus they mutually live together this is called symbiosis the definition of symbiosis is this it is the association in which two different types of organisms live and work together for their mutual benefit this is called symbiosis mark it because it comes in the exam generally now like and show a symbiotic relationship in symbiosis then we as we said earlier the the rhizobium bacteria growing on the nodules of leguminous plant is another example of symbiosis special mode of nutrition now in this what happens there are plants that are green in color but yet they need nitrogenous matters it's found normally in this volcanic regions where nitrogen is less so these plants need nitrogen and to get nitrogen what they do is they feed upon flies and insects upon organisms that are there the best example of that is the venus flytrap plant the trap is open and when an insect comes and sits on it it just closes like this and all the insect that is there gets trapped in it we have the other type the pitcher plant the leaf the tip of the leaf tip of the pitcher plant the lamina portion develops into a pitcher a matka like structure and it has got a lid when the fly enters it it goes inside to drink the nectar the flap over it closes and the trap is set why to get nitrogenous matter from these dead creatures these are the special types of nutrition in plants replenishing the nutrients in the soil now generally farmers you have seen them scattering something into their farm into this place where they grow rice wheat and other things what are they scattering they are scattering urea they contain phosphorus and nitrogenous matters these plants require nitrogen and phosphorus for their growth so this nitrogenous matter the urea is supplied by the farmer as we have just seen like leguminous plants these plants have root nodules in which the rhizobium bacteria grows so what the farmer does is for one season he grows these lentils and they absorb they put in the nitrogen into the soil and then the next crop that is there has sufficient nitrogen in the soil and thus it is compensated so we find nitrogen is quite important for the growth of plants nutrition in plants nutrition is the process of taking in food by an organism and its digestion absorption and utilization in the body now the modes of it are of basically three types the autotrophic the heterotrophic and the special modes the autotrophic mode of nutrition is auto as we have read that word studied it it's the capability of preparing its own food in the presence of sunlight using chlorophyll and they are basically done with the help of water and minerals carbon dioxide chlorophyll and sunlight in heterotrophic mode of nutrition this generally occurs in non green plants they do not have the ability to manufacture their own food and therefore they depend upon the autotrophs there are basically three types the saprotrophic which is the example is the indian pipe they dwell upon dead and decaying matter the parasites that are there which dwell upon other plants such as cascuta it can be semi parasitic plants like mistletoe then we have the third type the symbiosis in which plants help each other the lichens the third type is the special mode of nutrition in which plants just need nitrogenous matter and therefore they take the nitrogenous matter by killing some insect and absorbing from their body example of this is the pitcher plant or the sundew so that's about nutrition in plants have a nice day